happens. Uh, D-Ray, let me start with the, I'm curious, I'm hoping you heard the end of Chief Acevedo's answer about qualified immunity uh, and about sort of, and, and where the police, can, you know, where sort of police leaders are. And, and look, I'm sure you didn't love the answer, but at the same time, the, it is, the conversation is moving in the activist direction. Where do you feel like the movement is right now? Yeah, so let me just zoom out. And, you know, I know Chief, Chief and I have been on some task force and stuff together. And we disagree about some fundamental pieces of it, but we do agree about things like accountability. We also know, you know, you look at 2021, the police have already killed 320 people this year. In 2020, the police killed more people than every year of data we have except for 2018. But to your question about qualified immunity, I think what a lot of people sort of confuse is they forget that this is just about civil cases. So we in qualified immunity for police officers, no individual officers are going to be held any more accountable. This is about your ability to sue the police department. Colorado is the only state uh, that we know of right now that has changed qualified immunity that might hold an individual officer accountable in a very small way. So I worry that people sort of overstate the importance of qualified immunity. Should it go away? Absolutely. Hmm. Isn't going to be the sort of big panacea around around accountability, it's not. What's, uh, give me your model police department, not where we have today, but what would a model police department uh, look like um, if the reforms that went through that you'd like to see go through went through? So, you know, Chuck, you know, I think that we can live in a world beyond the police. I don't think that we need uh, people with guns to respond to the vast majority of things that happen in community. But what happened in Maryland, in terms of what is immediate, what happened in Maryland is actually really powerful. A shout out to the Speaker of the House, Adrian Jones, uh, and the President of the Senate, Bill Ferguson, to lead this package through despite Governor Hogan. Is, it is the most aggressive ban on no-knock raids in the United States history. It is, it is amazing what they push through. Uh, it is also the best and most citizen-led accountability that we have in the country. It binds the police chief. It makes it so citizens can double check uh, decisions. That doesn't exist anywhere else in the United States. New Jersey has the best use of force policies in the United States. Over 350 mm -hmm. cities since last June have restricted the power of the police to use force. About 15 states have also done that. So that stuff is big. But we think about one of the biggest leverage to, is actually police unions. You know, we lead the country's work around police unions and police unions have an incredible amount of power. There are places where the police, yeah. uh, they can't be interviewed within 48 hours. In Portland and in uh, Seattle, the contract says that the officer has to be disciplined in the least embarrassing manner. You're like, I don't even know what that means. Uh, there are a lot of places where police disciplinary records get destroyed after two, three four years. You know, it's like the police have really rigged yeah. this. And there are 20 states that have state level officer bill of rights that protect the police. That's actually what made the Maryland bill so incredible. Maryland was the first state to have an officer bill of rights and was actually the first state to repeal it. You know, it's interesting you bring up police unions, because I guess the question is, how much of this reform do you believe has to be on the state and local level or are you playing whack-a-mole on the state and local level and nothing happens unless you create a higher uh, floor on the federal level? So I guess, because look, you, you hear the, the news that the Justice Department's investigating Minneapolis. And if, my first question was, well, what about Brooklyn Center, which is next door? You know, uh, wh what, where do you view as, as, the, as where it's needed most? You got to work on the state level because of all these specific laws or, or do you think a federal reform package can can do the trick do you know how what's the highest number of investigations the doj has ever done in a given year like what's your guess there are eighteen thousand police departments what's your guess yeah i'm gonna guess less than five Three. Yes, you're right yeah so you know we like the yeah. doj intervention it, it has changed a lot of places but when you think about three out of eighteen thousand you're like that's not a right. It's not necessarily a big win. And normally it goes where the media goes. It doesn't necessarily go where the problem is most acute. So you think about places like Phoenix and Phoenix, one in three homicides a couple of years ago was committed by a police officer, right? Like Albuquerque, uh, you know, it's places like that where the DOJ should actually be intervening, right? Phoenix and Albuquerque. But our cameras but aren't, haven't been there. What you're saying is our yeah. cameras aren't there, right? Right. Your cameras aren't there. And, you know, the police actually kill more people in suburban communities than almost all other communities combined. It's not even close. So you look at when we graph it, it's like suburbs are here. Cities are here. Cities are actually like the only place that it's getting mm -hmm. better. So Brooklyn Center is much more representative of the problem. Ferguson is the suburbs. Kenosha, where Jacob Lake got shot, is yep. the suburbs. Right. So 
But I say all that to say the federal government can do some interesting things, but the real juice is at the local and state level. And what Biden could do tomorrow Mm -hmm. in the George Floyd Act, remember, it doesn't reign in the federal government. He tomorrow could reign in Border Patrol. That's 20,000 officers. ICE, the ATF, the DEA, he has the absolute power to do that without Congress, without a commission, without a task force. He could do that right now. But you bring up the point I was trying to bring up with Chief Acevedo, and that's because I know the area well. I grew up there. Miami-Dade County has dozens of police forces, right? Um, right? I promise you, Metro and the city of Miami have a lot of eyes on it. I don't know how many eyes are on Miami Gardens. I don't know how many eyes are on South Miami. And those are just two police departments I'm singling out. And I, you know, no, I'm not saying there's a specific reason, but that's my point. This suburban police department issue, are there too many of them? Should they all be collapsed? So definitely too many, but also like people just aren't paying attention. And you know, people talk about training and people talk about body cameras. And the research is clear. Training might change police officer attitudes, doesn't change their behaviors. Body cameras might change police officer attitudes, doesn't change their behaviors. Chuck, imagine if you had a job where you could do whatever you wanted and the worst thing you did, the consequence would be going to a training. You do whatever you want. Even with convictions, the highest number of convictions ever, you know, police kill on average 1,100 people a year. The highest number of convictions ever is 11 in a given year. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.